Hello everybody, Jeremy here, and I want to talk a little bit about cameras. So, right now, I'm holding on to this. This is the Pentax K1000. And I shot some film with this, I did a video about that, and I rather enjoyed the pictures. But I also have my digital camera, and of course I'm not going to let my digital camera, you know, go to waste. I'm still going to use it frequently, but I also wanted to make use of the lenses that I got for the K1000. And I want to be able to get even more lenses and put it on the Pentax K1000 and have different pictures. But I also want my digital camera to share that same experience. So, in a case like that, what do you do? I'll tell you what you do. You go out on the internet and you find yourself an adapter that can adapt certain lenses to your digital camera. And I did just that. I have a Nikon One Systems camera. So, I bought this on Amazon for about 15 bucks. This is a Pentax K or PK adapter to Nikon One cameras, which means I can take K mount cameras and mount it onto my Nikon One camera. Which means I can take these really, really old, well not really, really, but I can take old lenses and put it on my modern day digital camera. However, if you're going to do this, there are some caveats. One, you lose all of your precious automatic features. There's no autofocus. There's no aperture priority. There's no metering. You have to know how to operate the camera manually in order to get the most out of those lenses that you have. Great thing about the lenses are there are a bunch, especially in the case of uh, Pentax K mount lenses, since the mounts really didn't change, you can just go back from decades ago and get good lenses, get long telephoto lenses, macro lenses, wide angle lenses, whatever lens you want to add to your digital arsenal you can do that with an adapter ring if you need one I happen to need one for this Pentax for this uh, Nikon one camera which I'm currently filming so how does such a thing work well this is a lens for the uh, Pentax K1000 it fits it this is a star D 28 millimeter f 2.8 lens. I can put this on my Nikon 1 if I wanted to. Here's what it looks like when all that's assembled. And the way that it works is that you take this adapter ring here, okay, and you take this part, the black part, and you mount it, stick it right on the Nikon 1, and you twist it it stays on there just fine. Now this part's going to be exposed on the opposite side. At that point, all you have to do is take, in this case, the K-mount lens, line up the red dots, just like this. Give it a little twist, and that's it. This part locks on to the Nikon 1, and you got yourself an old lens mounted to a modern camera. Now you can still control the aperture to make it smaller, to make it wider, and you're going to have to know how changing the aperture is going to affect your exposure, how it's going to affect your shutter speed, but you still do have some advantages since you're using the body of a digital camera. You still get to choose what your ISO is going to be for whatever shot that you take you can change your shutter speed whenever you want you can change your white balance if you want you can put a little filter on it if you want those are things that you can still do because it's all in the body of the camera the only thing that you can't do are things that require the lens and the body of the camera to communicate with each other there are no electronics in this lens that can talk to a Nikon 1 and this adapter here is not smart it's a dumb adapter. All it can do is mount to the camera and let you put other lenses on it. And when you want to take it off, this particular one, all you have to do is just push this back, give it a twist, 
and it totally comes apart. So depending on the camera that you have, you can have a Canon, you might have a Nikon. If you want to use old lenses on your digital camera, find out if you need an adapter like this one. Go online and find out how much that adapter costs. Then you can go back online and you can go to places like eBay or, or one of your local uh, thrift stores or pawn shops wherever you want to go find these really old lenses figure out which one that you want and mount it onto your camera the only thing that you have to do is know how to properly adjust for an exposure that you would need so right now let me show you some shots that I took with this cam with this lens mounted onto my Nikon 1 This clip that you're seeing right here is actually being done on that same 28 millimeter lens that I just showed you. Now, remember, it's all manual focus, and I got this Pentax K1000 as close to the lens as I can possibly get it without it going out of focus. See, I move a little bit closer, it's out of focus. Bring it back a little bit, it's back in focus. I bring it all the way down here, it's a blurry mess. So, I just have to move the focus ring until we can get it in focus almost there and we got it now I don't know if you can tell um, that the video quality might be different or anything like that but if you couldn't tell just know that I'm using the old lens to film this portion of the video so that's also pretty cool but you still have to do that all manual as well so I think those pictures didn't turn out half bad and I also have here the lens that came with the Pentax K1000. This is the 50mm uh, f.2 lens. Now this lens is faster than the one that I showed earlier and it too can be mounted to this adapter. All I have to do is once again line up the redness, the red dots, twist it and there you go. So if you did not have a fast lens for an Nikon one camera because the one the official one is like hundred and eighty six dollars and if for whatever reason you know that's a little bit too much money you don't want to deal with that and you want to have a fast lens that's good in low light and you happen to have one of these sitting around or if you want to go online and spend thirty forty bucks on this kind of lens you can do that you know it's it's all glass the only difference is there's no electronics involved with this particular uh, lens so if you just want to do things manually, you can do that. It's still going to be good in low light, you know, and assuming that everything in the lens still works and the aperture, you know, ring is nice and smooth and have a bunch of oil on it and stuff like that, you can get good results with this lens. The pictures that I had in my earlier video that I got developed, some of them were taken with this lens. They look fine. So that's just a little uh, tip if you will for people who may just be wanting to start off in photography and they want to build up a lens collection that does not cost them hundreds and thousands of dollars to create you can just get adapters go out and find old manual lenses and manual lenses will help teach you more about the fundamentals uh, about photography you know, save you some money in the long run then you can also go out and, and, and get the uh, digital lenses as well you know it's all good this is just a nice little alternative and if you ever wanted to shoot film and if you don't have a, a film camera you know you can still go online buy a film camera that accepts the particular amount of lens that you have and then bam you get double the use out of the lenses for your digital and analog cameras you know that's the great thing about it so yeah that's all that I wanted to share today and um, yeah I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna buy myself some more lenses and uh, see how things are gonna look with film and on digital so till next time I'm Jeremy and I'll see you later